first round, Dallas Cowboys. That draft also held a special significance for the Saints. In the war room where Jim Finks held command, speculation continued to grow that Jim Finks was becoming the leading candidate to replace Roselle. NFL owners met in New Orleans to discuss future Super Bowl sites and the proposed new spring league. Later, they would meet in Chicago to debate the commissioner's successor. The NFL Players Association also held an alumni meeting in New Orleans. And we talked about the changing of the guard with Gene Upshaw during a benefit golf tournament. We really believe and we hate to see uh, uh, Pete Roselle step down. I had a good relationship with him and uh, I'm sort of in no man's land at this point wondering who's going to be the new commissioner and what impact it has. I'm hoping that his first job would be to get us a new collective bargaining agreement. That would be the way that they're going to find out if this commissioner uh, has authority and is able to deliver, because that's the number one issue. The Saints continue their caravan series with three trips to various areas of the state. This particular one was headed up by Jim Finks with players Brad Edelman and Sam Mills, offensive coordinator Carl Smith, and marketing director Greg Suit. They all traveled to the Mobile, Alabama, Pensacola, Florida region and were guests of the USS Lexington and an onboard closed circuit TV show to answer questions from the sailors. Then there was the off-season camp. The Falcons? The Redskins? No, this one was Bobby Bear's Bayou All-Star Camp at St. Paul's in Covington. Two years ago, the Jim Mora Show traveled to Oregon and the Brock Brothers football camp. This time, we had one just across the lake, and we'll talk more about that camp on a future show. And what would an off-season be without a little fishing with special teams coach Joe Marciano? This trip got a little rain shortened, however. The players participated in several benefit basketball games, this one against the Miami Dolphins. Nice pass from Ricky Jackson, but Dalton Hilliard got hammered. Now, check him out from outside. Yes! And there was the minicamp for orientation and conditioning. Newly drafted defensive back Robert Massey getting an opportunity to acclimate himself to the pro game. The first ever Who Dat Fan Club convention was held at the Hilton, featuring storytelling, souvenirs, and players and coaches rubbing shoulders in a casual atmosphere. The Saint Sations held their annual tryouts getting ready for the 89 season. Like the Saints, they'll have some new pretty faces to watch when they line up for the opening game. Six players and a couple of coaches visited Cozumel, Mexico, and Belize City in Central America on a special diving excursion aboard the Ocean Spirit. The Jim Mora Show traveled with them for a feature story on a future show. And there was two new inductees to the Saints Hall of Fame, Tom Dempsey and Tommy Myers. They joined Archie Manning and Danny Abramowitz, who were the charter members inducted a year ago. Yes, it was a busy off-season for the Saints. And it's been a busy one in La Crosse. Remember the rain in Hammond? That was one of the reasons for moving the camp to Wisconsin. Now, here's what the practice fields looked like at La Crosse just a few months ago. Quite a transition. Welcome back to La Crosse now. And th this season, 1989, Jim Mora joins us. And uh, it was quite a transition there from that football field and the one that we're sitting on right here on the, the La Crosse campus. Things look a little different, don't they, Larry? <laughs> they really do. It's a bit overcast. The weather's been perfect, though, here since this camp started. It's been really good. We've had a few hot days, and then we've had some overcast days. Yesterday it rained, and uh, we had to work out inside, but uh, we were able to use the facility here, and it was a good workout for us. Well, we're glad to have you back for another year and another year of the Jim Mora Show. We're looking forward to an exciting one this season, and uh, it all starts right here at, at training camp. This is where we get most of our hard work done and all our preparation for the regular season, so this is an important time for us. This camp has a transition period going for you. A lot of things are different. One, you have an 80-player limit. Uh, two, you had a very strong off-season conditioning program, and I'm sure that those were factors And why you haven't really gotten down to the hard work of uh, the full combat gear on and on. Well, what we did, Larry, we, we brought our rookies and free agents in for five practices prior to all the vets coming in, and we worked out them in pads, so those were pretty intense workouts. Then we brought the veterans in, and we had three days of two-a-days, but those were in shorts and helmets. But it, what we did this year is we did not have a, a, a three-day mini camp in New Orleans, so we actually had our mini camp here in training camp those first three days. And actually, our veterans are here, were here earlier than they were last year. Here, They were here three or four days earlier than they were last year, so, so we haven't lost any time. In fact, in the long run, we've made up some time, and we've got extra practices, so it's going to work out to our benefit. You've gotten all your draft choices into camp except for the number one pick, and I know that uh, all coaches seem to be anxious to see how those young guys will fit in right away when you start putting the helmets and pads on and, and seeing how they acclimate themselves with the veterans. Right. 
we, uh, we, we were excited about our draft. You know, we had all 12 of our draft picks in our off-season program, which started two weeks after the draft and went till the middle of June, which was about a six-week period. Now, some of those guys had some school obligations where they couldn't be there the whole six weeks, but for the most part, all 12 of them there were there for a, a good majority of the time. So we got a real thorough evaluation of them during that time. Now, here it's a little different. They're putting the pads on, and there's contact, and they're in with, you know, more with the veterans, and the veterans are more serious about things. But uh, we're excited about our draft. I think we're going to find some football players out of that group. We'll be talking about the, each of the draft choices coming up later in the show, but uh, uh, you also have four veterans still unsigned. Every year this happens. I, I don't know the media makes a big thing out of it, and every camp around the country right now is still having trouble getting everybody into camp that first week. Right. It seemed like this year things were a little slower than they have been the last three years. But uh, like you say, we have all of our rookie, all of our draft picks in except our number one, Wayne Martin, and I would hope that he'd be here before too long. We do have the four veterans that are still holding out, and uh, I'm hopeful that they'll be in before too long, too, and I think they will be. We talked about this team being a team in transition. Uh, all the teams really are in transition at training camp, but this year in particular because of Plan B, you've got a lot of uh, holes to fill, uh, positions to fill, and you're making some changes. Uh, Dave Weimer, for example, has been moved to safety, and, and uh, Brett Maxey over to free safety. Well, Brett, we, we, we moved to strong safety. He, or strong he, safety. Right. right. He right. played free safety. But, you know, it's a combination of Plan B where we lost some players, and also we chose not to bring some players back. Reggie Sutton, Tony Elliott, uh, Bruce Clark uh, failed his physical, and and things like that. And these were players that had played a lot with us. So you, you take those guys plus the plan B losses, and we've got some positions where we need to find some players, and uh, I believe we will. All right, we're going to take a look at those draft choices coming up here in just a moment. We'll take a look at the 12 draft picks right after this. <laughs> 